to latch me or slides up for the case, please. So this is a 66-year-old male with a past medical history of HCV, originally diagnosed more than 20 years ago. Um, status post interferon uh, with sustained virologic response. Uh, he recently presented to an outside hospital with abdominal pain and was found to have infiltrative HCC with right portal vein invasion on a CT scan there. Um, the patient was referred to interventional radiology at Mount Sinai for evaluation for uh, local regional therapy in the setting of unresectable HCC with macrovascular invasion. His past medical and surgical history are listed below. Next slide, please. Uh, he has no allergies. Uh, he takes Lipitor. Uh, his social, social history is uh, relatively non-contributory. Next slide. Uh, his physical exam findings are listed on the left. Uh, on the right uh, are his labs. Of note is INR is 1.1, T Billy is 0 0.8, and albumin is 3.4. Next slide. Uh, so this is the original triple phase CT performed on 429. Um, you have an arterial phase and uh, a delayed phase imaging uh, showing an infiltrative uh, right lobe mass. Um, next slide, please. Uh, these are both uh, portal venous phase imaging from that triple phase CT, uh, better delineating the right portal vein uh, tumor thrombus extending to the portal confluence. Next slide. And MR images uh, correlate with the CT findings showing uh, infiltrative HCC in the right hepatic lobe. Next slide. Uh, the patient was mapped on 531 last week. Uh, the images don't project very well, but there's a celiac run and then our MAA injection site. Next slide. Uh, this is the dosing information. Uh, we are doing two vials of uh, 19 GBQ today um, to, uh, to target this right lobe infiltrative mass with portal tumor thrombus. Uh, next slide. So in summary, this is a 66-year-old male with HCV and newly diagnosed infiltrative right lobe HCC with right portal vein invasion. He's ECOG0, child PUA6, BCLCC, uh, status post mapping and MAA administration on 531 here today for Y90 and Therospear treatment. Okay, so, um, you know, this, this case, uh, there can be a lot of questions, but in terms of the dosimetry, we wanted to target uh, in excess of 200 gray or, or close to 260 gray based on Etienne Guerin's paper with CVT with a survival benefit. Uh, for approximately a 600 cc uh, perfused volume with the, with the tumor. And so the right lobe itself actually measured almost in excess of 1,900 gray, uh, 1,900 cc's, and we uh, dosed about 80 gray to that right lobe. But in actuality, the perfused volume is getting in excess of 260 gray, uh, making account of uh, uniform distribution. And so this is where we're at now. Uh, we can run through... The, f the first set of runs, and we'll show you the celiac. We're basically replicating everything that we did on our mapping procedure, which is really where all the hard work is done. And so, uh, Lachmi, if you could run through the celiac run first. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind is we uh, actually uh, don't ask the patients to hold their breath, because uh, when we inject the therosphere, they're not holding their breath. So you can see the celiac, there's pretty conventional anatomy left and right. Uh, and then if you could show the fluoroscopy image, watch me. So we wanted to get out and replicate our injection from the right hepatic artery, a branch of the right hepatic artery going to the uh, uh, tumor that we confirmed with cone beam CT. So if you can show the fluorosave. Yes. Uh, so this is a little bit difficult to see because we did it with uh, a smart mask or roadmap. But basically you can see that the catheter itself, we wanted to seed it into the right hepatic artery. So we use the microcatheter and the wire uh, and hold it in place. And then we place the uh, SARA radio catheter over the direction, uh, uh, 2.7 French direction, 155 cm length with the 016 fathom wire. Uh, and just seed that SARA radio catheter into the uh, right hepatic artery. And that way it makes it easy because we're doing a multi-vial injection. We're doing two injections 
of a starting 19 gigabecquerel dose into that target tissue uh, with an overall target that's going to be about 3.5 gigabecquerels uh, decayed down uh, to that perfuse segment. And so that's, we got the first dose in. Yeah. So that's the two-week decay, right? The yeah, so that's yeah. another component. We did a two-week yeah. decay because we wanted to get a, a little bit of coverage. So that amounts to a little less than 8 million particles going in per vial. And so that'll end up being about probably 15 million particles uh, covering that 600 cc volume. And this is the uh, confirmation uh, angiogram that we uh, performed uh, right before our Y90 injection. And so we're using serospheres, glass microspheres. Uh, and uh, uh, we did the first injection already. And uh, Adam is pretty much set to show how we do the second injection. And I can field any questions as the camera shows how he's going to uh, basically hook up the injection from radial axis. So, Albert, uh, you mentioned uh, that the, the hard work is done during the mapping, and I completely agree uh, with that. In your experience, uh, do you have any difficulty doing a combined CT to having a radial access? Do you need to do any additional maneuver to kind of get the patient in a better position in order to get this thing done? Yeah, that's a very good question. So um, we use Philips uh, open prop. And so with our Philips open prop, we don't have to change anything in positioning of the patient except just to move the right arm uh, above their head. Uh, but otherwise, it takes probably, I don't know, less than 30 seconds to set up our uh, radial axis cone beam CT. Now, it depends on the, the machine that you have. So certain machines uh, from different manufacturers, you may have to um, do special maneuvers to, to get a good field of view. Yeah, we, uh, the nice thing about open prop uh, that our Philips machines have is that uh, it actually uh, helps with obese patients because the starting trajectory of the cone beam CT is at about 270 degrees. And so you're not starting at zero degrees. And so that helps uh, tremendously and gets a nice field of view uh, for patients' uh, livers. Just one word of note uh, from a technical point from this case is we chose to use the higher flow direction microcatheter because the direction microcatheter, uh, the higher flow has very high uh, rates. Even the, the uh, lower flow direction microcatheter goes up to 3.5 cc's per second. And especially in our mapping procedure, that's, that's our go-to microcatheter. And for something as vascular as this with uh, portal vascular invasion and shunting, uh, it really sumps the flow, and so you need a high uh, flow microcatheter to get very good images. And so we feel very confident using the direction microcatheter uh, to get those quality images because everything that we do is image guidance, and so the image guidance part of it is extremely important for, for mapping. So Ed, this is a patient you know with PVT. Um, I can't remember if it was macro PVT, well, obviously macro PVT. Um, so do you have, they started him on systemic therapy or are you going to start him on systemic therapy? That's a, that's a very good question. So the, the hot thing these days is uh, immuno-oncology and right. uh, with, um, you know, nivolumab used as second line therapy and pending studies using pembrol pembrolizumab and lymvatinib, et cetera. Uh, most patients with any type of macrovascular invasion or systemic spread or suspected systemic spread are, are going to go on systemic therapy. Now, the timing is the question. For us, we want, uh, and our referring physicians know that the uh, Therosphere works extremely well in this type of patient cohort. And so they'll send it to us first for local regional therapy, and they'll add the uh, PD-1 inhibitor on afterwards. Uh, our suspicion is that there may be a component of uh, immunomodulation with our uh, radioembolization. Uh, that's the hope. We're actually designing a study to investigate that, and there are other studies going on. Uh, but immunomodulation is, is extremely uh, hot right now, uh, whether it's with other tyrosine kinase inhibitors or local regional therapies, because current trials are showing about 20 to 30 percent objective response uh, with just immunotherapy alone. And so uh, I think people are really looking for that holy grail. And I think we can uh, combine therapies to get uh, higher success rates. So when you say immunomodulation, I, mean, I obviously know what you mean, but you mean sort of prime the immune system doing the, the local regional therapy yeah. Yeah, and yeah. sort of set them up to so the, it's the, Yeah, really uh, increase yeah. the T-cell response uh, in the body so that the PD-1 or PD-L1 PD inhibitor 
can take its maximum effect uh, onto tumor. And when it works, I mean, it's it's incredible. But yeah. unfortunately, it doesn't work on every every patient. So while we're we were chatting away, Adam just you know very <laughs> stealthily uh, injected and uh, d disassembled the box, and and that's how quickly uh, and a testament to our fellows on on how well they can do these procedures.